what is a cervical lordosis and what causes a loss of it? One of the natural spinal curvatures is something called the lordosis. A lordosis refers to when the spine curves towards the towards inside of the body or towards the front of the body, it's bending forward. And this is kind of in a standard C shape. Lordotic curvatures are normally in the cervical spine, in the lumbar spine, where curves actually bend towards the front. The opposite is something called a kyphosis, which refers to when the spine bends towards the back or the back of the body in a reverse seat. And this is normally in the thoracic level and also the sacrum or the sacral level. So we have lordosis in the neck and the lumbar spine and kyphosis in the thoracic spine and the sacrum. Now, why are these spinal curvatures important? A spinal natural or healthy curves make it stronger, make it more flexible, make it better to absorb stress-like forces of compression or gravity, kind of like a coiled spring. And the natural and the next natural lordosis is important because it's supporting the neck and it supports the weight of the head and it distributes weight evenly throughout the upper cervical spine down into the thoracic spine. Also, the neck is also the bridge uh, between the brain and the skull and the body. So imagine all the nerves, all the blood vessels, all the tissues that are extending between these two areas and it's connecting the, 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 the brain and the skull down to the lower half or the bottom half of the body. So this connection or this bridge is important because not only is it carrying all these tissues, but it's also sending messages. There's communication, meaning the nerve communication, and there's also blood communication or blood flow between the be, happening through the cervical spine. So what is a loss of cervical lordosis? Well, a cervical spine is meant to have this normal curvature bending towards the front of the body. Well, when the neck becomes excessively straight, meaning the curve is no longer there, this is something called a loss of cervical lordosis or hypolordosis. Also, the cervical spine can become reversed where it starts to bend backwards. And this where the spine becomes more kyphotic. It becomes a, there's a cervical kyphosis or a kyphotic cervical spine. This is where the spine's actually bending in the wrong direction. So why is this bad? Like why is the loss of cervical lordosis bad? Well, number one, it can affect the biomechanics of the spine. And this biomechanics of the spine, meaning how your skull is being held above your torso, is very important biomechanically because if it's abnormally aligned, it leads to abnormal degeneration of the joints of the cervical spine, which can predispose you to future problems as the spine degenerates abnormally. Secondarily, it can affect the bridge between the brain and the body in the nerve system, meaning the spinal cord that's running through the spine also has to change its shape. And when it changes its shape, it can affect the nerves exiting through the spinal cord, through the spinal canal, but it can also expect, affect the spinal cord itself, normally leading to stretching of the spinal cord. When you begin to stretch the spinal cord, you affect the way the spinal cord actually functions, and you can affect the communication between the brain and the body. It can also affect the blood vessels, meaning as you lose the, lose the normal cervical lordosis, Blood vessels can also become stretched, and these blood vessels become stretched, it can decrease blood flow physically to your brain, and this lack of blood flow can lead to other issues and other concerns. Um, so therefore, when we lose the normal alignment, it can introduce all those things, and the most common thing that we tend to diagnose this with is something called forward head posture. And this is when your head starts to shift forward relative to your body. We know as much as one inch, just a little, I mean, sorry, as little as one inch moving forward, which is not much, can increase leverage weight of your skull to your upper back by 10 pounds every inch. So two inches is 20 pounds, three inches is 30 pounds of leverage force. It can also cause something military neck where the spine is very, very straight, kind of like this idea of standing at intention where the neck becomes very, very straight. And if the neck loses its healthy curve, it, it, is, uh, it affects the curves below in the thoracic and the lumbar levels. So just because you have a loss of cervical lordosis, it's not limited to just affecting this area. It can affect anything below that. Now, what are some common symptoms associated with cervical lordosis? Well, First thing is that when you lose the curve in the neck, you're much more prone to injury because since the curve isn't there, you can't absorb, uh, absorb compressive forces as well. So compression 
is more likely to injure you. It can lead to muscle tension and pain. And the reason why it leads to muscle tension and pain, because as your head moves forward, it increases that weight that we mentioned, causing your head to weigh 10, 20, 30 pounds heavier as a result of leverage, forward leverage. So these muscles will tend to contract and to become tighter because they're working harder. And this can lead to pain and discomfort as a result of this tension. It can lead to abnormal degeneration, like I mentioned. So the cervical disc degeneration, cervical, uh, cervical vertebral body degeneration and bone spurs, which can lead to weakness in these areas, can result as a result of loss of cervical lordosis. We can also see postural changes occurring in the body. And also it can lead to anything vascular related. It can cause vascular, uh, um, it can cause a loss of vascular flow um, of the blood up into the brain because the stretching of the vertebral arteries. And it can also lead to, any, to nerve involvement. It can affect the nerves that are going from the brain down into the body. It can cause either motor or sensory problems, meaning it can lead to motor function issues and it can lead to um, sensory type of issues. Now, what nerves go through your cervical spine? Well, the answer is all of them. Every single nerve that goes down into your body goes through your cervical spine. So when you affect your cervical spine, spine the effects can be very widespread. So we look at loss of lordosis. So the, the thing we have to ask is, well, what can cause all this? Well, unfortunately, we're seeing loss of cervical lordosis more often than not these days because of something that we call tech neck. And tech neck is when we're constantly looking at screens and at phones for long periods of time, causing our neck to be lo losing their normal lordosis in this forward position, we can actually see this it actually develops into something we call tech neck. Now, unfortunately, kids are doing this during development. They're doing this during growth, during development. They're spending hours and hours looking down at screens and iPads and, and different types of uh, devices while their neck is actually physically developing, um, we're very worried about what the future will look like for these people's cervical spine because they're growing in this forward or reverse position. How much of that will, will we be able to correct? It's almost kind of like a deformity that's developing during growth. But this can also be acquired later on in, in the adult stage for spending too much time looking at screens and looking at technology. Uneven weights, meaning carrying weight unevenly, um, can lead to um, a loss of cervical lordosis. Traumas like car accidents, slips and falls, injuries can lead to a loss of cervical lordosis. Uh, chronic poor posture, meaning sitting in properly poor posture, can lead to it. And also sedentary lifestyle. The spine is designed to move, and the more sedentary you tend to become, the more likely you are to lose the normal curvatures. So. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer proactive treatment for a number of spinal conditions, including loss of cervical lordosis. Cervical lordosis, restoring the normal cervical lordosis will help improve all the conditions that can be occurring as a result of the loss of cervical lordosis. And the treatment plans are normally shaped by the severity, the causation, and of course, what the person's experiencing, and of course, where the loss of lordosis would be, because sometimes the loss of lordosis can only be in the lower neck or in the upper neck. And the goal here is to correct what's causing this process to occur, not just trying to treat the symptoms of loss of cervical lordosis, meaning you can have you know, some neck tension or some stiffness, and you can do things to try to improve range of motion, but the loss of lordosis is still there, meaning the symptoms will return. By restoring the normal shape of the spine, not only can you improve what it's actually directly causing, but you may be improving things that haven't fully developed yet because it takes time for this condition to cause all its effects that it could lead to in your body. So we recommend proactive, conservative treatment and improving the cervical lordosis as soon as possible, especially if you're very aware that you have a loss of this curve. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.